Hello YouTube, I'm Guy Likes Guitar, and the song you just heard was written by me to showcase the Boss HM... No? The clear tone grinds the... No, that's not it. Sorry, Kohle. The uh, TC Electronic I Mask... No! Alright, you got me. The truth is, I didn't use any of these pedals to get the guitar sound you just heard. I also didn't use dedicated plugins that emulate the famous HM2 sound. So how did I end up with this sound, you might wonder? Well, I used a combination of existing amp sims in a way that no sane person would ever use. Well, maybe with the exception of Mick Gordon. Which brings me to the process of creating this sound in the first place. It was thanks to a video of Mick Gordon speaking at GDC about how he created the soundtrack for the 2016 Doom game. If you haven't watched it, go on and watch it. It is very insightful if you are interested in recording and creating new sounds. One of his approaches in creating the soundtrack for Doom 2016 really resonated with me. He said, and I quote, Change the process, change the outcome. This may seem trivial at first, but in a bedroom musician slash the AW environment context, it really changes a lot. For instance, to get a typical bread and butter metal guitar sound within your DAW, you need to go into a Tube Screamer kind of plugin, into an amp sim, and from there into an IR loader. But what would happen if we would use one amp sim into another, or going from Tube Screamer into Tube Screamer? Exactly! New sounds which no sane person would come up with, I guess. And this is exactly how I got this HM2-ish sound with only free plugins and a free imports response. And now I want to share this knowledge with you. For that, however, we need to head on over into Reaper, where I will explain everything in detail to you. Let's go! Alright, so here we are within Reaper. And as you can see, I've already recorded two separate guitar tracks. One panned hard left and one panned hard right. The riff itself is nothing fancy, just something to really show the purpose of this HM2 sound. The only thing active right here is the impulse loader. I'm using NetIR, but you can basically use any other impulse loader that you want. The important thing is the impulse that you're using. Where I'm going to use the Espress High impulse from Catharsis on the left guitar. And on the right guitar, I am using the Espress 5 just to add some diversity to the overall sound at the end. These right here, I'm going to guide you through step by step, setting them up, dialing in the sound. And when I'm done dialing in, I'm going to drag every plugin over here so we can get our final stereo sound. But before that, I'm going to show you the bare bones sound without anything enabled. Let's go. All right, pretty metal, huh? To remedy this, we're going to look at this guy, the Le 456 from Le Pou plugins. Ancient old by this point, ancient uh, angle powerball simulation, but it can really deliver some decent metal sounds even today. The only thing that we have to do here is crank everything. I'm not even joking. Crank everything like on an HM2 pedal. You can use these two options, but uh, you don't really have to. But in my opinion, they are quite beneficial to the final HM2 sound. The focus option is like a built-in compressor, which squashes the signal additionally. And the bottom option right here is basically a bass boost. The important thing is to really lower this one, the input knob, to somewhere between zero and yeah, one. Basically, this is the first line right here. Something like this. 
All right, I think we're done. No, the channel. We want distortion channel, of course. We're done with this one. Drag it over here and let's listen. All right, we're heading up there in small steps, but there's still some stuff to do. Before we add the next plugin, let's just uh, add your noise gate of choice. I'm just gonna use the effect silencer with my rhythm guitar preset. Basically a noise gate, it's quite self-explanatory. All right, next up is the Prophet by Ignite Amps again. And what we're gonna do here is, you guessed it, crank everything. Just don't crank the volume because uh, bad things might happen, your ears might bleed and something like that. The gain and also really important is this shape button right here or this shape switch because Enabled, it will really emphasize the mids, which will give us this uh, chainsaw sound at the end. Yeah, just drag it over here in front of the already distorted Le 456 and take a listen. Okay, one final plugin remaining, this one. Ignite Amps Tyrant Screamer. With this one, we don't crank everything, but we dial it in like so. Drive at full, tone at zero, level full, and sweep at zero. Tone and sweep are at zero because otherwise they would make the sound even more brighter than it already is. You can never have enough drive for this kind of sound. And same goes for level. On the back side, just crank the input level also. With this, we're done here. And let's drag it over and take a listen. Okay, we're pretty much done here. As a bonus, you could use something like this. Sonic U is something like a small Portek EQ, which I use for further tone shaping and uh, refining the sound overall. I'm using it on the folder because I want it applied to both my left and right guitar channel. And I use it basically to finalize the uh, HM2 sound and make it more believable to be a, a sound that comes from a pedal rather than some free plugins. The important thing is the high pass not so much, you could use it, but you don't really need to. But the low pass is important because it will get off this really high digital fizz that we're introducing with all these uh, distorting and bright plugins. These two right here basically are doing the pull tech low end trick, boost and attenuating at the same amount on 30 hertz. The highs you can pretty much leave alone and it's never a bad idea to boost some mids additionally. Let me play back the riff and I will play around with these buttons. Here we go.
All right, I hope you could hear how every knob affected the sound overall. And this is basically it. This is how I got the HM2 sound with only three plugins. Let's head back. I encourage you to keep on experimenting with this approach from here on out. I'm pretty sure that this sound can still be tweaked if the formula itself is changed. So do it like McGordon said. Change the process, change the outcome. Before I stop rambling, I want to say that I'm not doing this video to disrespect Boss or Cleartone or Behringer or TC Electronic or any other company that has built an HM2 clone over the years. Nor do I claim that this experiment exactly replicates the famous Swedish death metal sound. I merely wanted to share this discovery of mine to you all, who may be in need of an HM2-ish sound but don't have one of the above mentioned pedals at hand. Or feet. Alright, I guess that was everything I had to say. To end this video, I prepared a cover version of a song which might be familiar to you if you enjoy the HM2 sound. I'm still surprised that it turned out that well and I hope you like it too. That being said, farewell my friends und bis bald. <laughs>